Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent, and I'm addicted to snotling pump wagons. Seriously, this is my all-time favorite Warhammer unit. Snotlings are tiny cousins of orcs and goblins. They follow orc armies around and make a nuisance of themselves. They're some of the stupidest creatures in existence. They're annoying and rude, and they're hilarious. When the orcs go to war, the snotlings follow along. Somehow, these little goobers are able to build dangerous, rickety wagons of war. They bounce across the landscape laughing and yelling. And sometimes, they successfully ram into a regiment of dwarven longbeards. In the 8th grade, I painted up this pump wagon, and it was a favorite part of my orcs and goblins army. In the game, this thing has a random move distance and puts out a random number of wounds. It's not very reliable, but that's part of what makes it so fun. A few years later, GW released another sculpt for the pump wagon. Each wagon is supposed to be unique and crazy in its own way, and I love both of the old metal GW models. If you want something truly unique though, you've got to build it yourself. Custom pump wagons are a great, ultra niche corner of our hobby. In this video, I'm using an awesome set of 3D printed bits to cobble together some goofy greenskin war machines. Alex at Cast and Play sculpted these parts that can be built into rickety and dangerous wagons. Wheels, boards, rams, sails, rollers, spikes, the works. And by the way, I was able to talk Cast and Play into giving away this kit for free. Go ahead and open up another tab and start that download. The bits in this kit come pre-supported, and I had no problem printing them out with my Creality LD002R resin printer. Creality sent me this printer to try out, and so far so good. Honestly, I'm finding all the printers in this generation to be pretty similar, but this Creality model is intuitive, it's quiet, and it's been giving me nice prints. I also do like the rougher texture of its build plate, and the volume markings in the resin vat. So I printed out a couple of each bit, I got them cleaned and cured, and I got ready for the fun to begin. There are no actual snotlings in this set, instead we've got some medium sized gobos. If snotlings can make spiky war machines, so can goblins. Now let's build a wagon for these goobers. This pile of bits is a delight, there is so much possibility here. Now since these are all STL files, you could build a wagon using these parts in Blender or a similar program but I love doing this by hand, picking things up and feeling how they go together. A sandbox of tactile creativity. For my first wagon, I just turned on the camera and jumped right in. I wanted this build to have four wheels, but other than that, I did not have a plan. I was experimenting, putting different bits in different places and looking for inspiration. This freeform approach was fun, and I think it was successful too. When I found beauty, I pulled out my super glue and caught it, locked it right in place. I've also got some super glue accelerator here on hand so that I can get the glue to set fast and I can keep on working. These crazy war machines give me the same type of joy that an orc player gets by making custom trucks and battle wagons. In the fluff, the greenskins who build these things aren't exactly geniuses. Their contraptions are funny and dangerous and awesome but they don't have to make any sense or be pretty. Any nerd with some bits and some super glue can make one of these vehicles and have some fun. I was pleasantly surprised with how this wagon came together. In particular, I was surprised by which bits I ended up using. I have a few favorite pieces in this set, but those weren't actually the ones that I used. I'll have to make another wagon or two and keep exploring this set. Let's do an ultralight. A platform, wheels, and a furled sail. This is going to be crewed by one or maybe two goobers. These goobers are just waiting for the wind to pick up, then they'll go hurtling across the battlefield like absolute maniacs. For this wagon, I decided to go with a three-wheel configuration. I looked for opportunities to stick a ram or spikes onto it, but in the end I decided to keep it nice and light. Two of the wheels do have spikes, so these goblins can still cause damage just nowhere near as much as that first wagon that I put together. In the end, I wound up with this cute little sailing cart. Okay, let's make a third wagon. Now I know the set a bit better, so I want to make something bigger. This time, I decided to make the base of the machine more than twice as long as the others, and to use at least six wheels. Oh, I'm gonna fit a lot of bits onto this crazy thing. 
This little collaboration with Cast and Play came about when Alex reached out to me to see if we could do a project together. Cast and Play does sculpting for 3D printing, and they're one of the larger STL subscription services out there. With our powers combined, we could bring some new models into the world and introduce them with a fun video. If a professional sculptor offered to design some brand new models for you, what would you pick? What does the world need more of? Well, I gotta tell ya, I am quite happy with this set of bits for making pump wagons. The Cast and Play Genie gave me one wish, and I spent it wisely. Unlimited pump wagons. During the time that Alex was working on this kit, there was news that pump wagons would be part of the Warhammer Total War game. And there was news that a pump wagon model would be coming out for Blood Bowl. It seems like pump wagons are coming back in a big way, and I couldn't be more happy. Good things can happen in 2020. This kit is not part of Cast and Play's monthly release, and they're giving it away for free. Also, on their Facebook page, they're running a competition for who can make the most awesome wagon. The official competition ends September 15th, but I encourage you to keep spamming them with pictures of awesome goblin contraptions for years to come. As for myself, I seriously do have a long-term goal of making a greenskin army composed of custom snotling pump wagons. As I showed at the start of the video, I've been able to build a handful, but my bits box was starting to run low on the proper kind of bits. 3D printing is really expanding my horizons for this project. Beyond pump wagons, there are lots of other things that you could do with this set. This stuff could be used in Skaven engineering, or a shantytown, or a scatter terrain. Who knows, if you have some horse minis, you might even be able to make a proper fancy carriage. Okay, the third wagon is finished. Let's get the wagons painted, then we'll move on to the crew. I started by priming them this neutral tan color. The wood on these bits has nice deep grooves, so we might as well paint them with washes. Washes and contrast paints are both great for wood grain. I ended up using Vallejo washes. Mostly sepia, but on one of the wagons I also layered on a coat of grey, and on another I layered on a coat of umber. Mixing wash colors like this can give some variety to the wood. When the washes were dry, I painted the vast majority of the other bits with rough iron from Army Painter. This stuff is reminiscent of the old tin bits color from GW, which is something I absolutely used on my very first pump wagon. The ultralight wagon got a red-brown sail as an accent color, and the big wagon got a dull blue canopy. But for the most part, it's gonna be the crew who are the real source of color on these builds. The wagon's painted up nice and easy, and I'm looking to do something similar with the crew. This kit has four different goblins. I decided to paint up two of each. Their main color is green skin. If I can get a decent paint recipe for that, we should be good to go. I started by priming pink. Bear with me, this is a paint order that I've been playing with, and I think it works well in certain situations. After the primer, I did a zenithal highlight with Liquitex white ink. Next I loaded up my paintbrush with this bright green ink, and I applied it as a filter all over everything, but more heavily from above. The look that I'm trying to get here is bright green goblins with pink in the shadows. The idea is that they have green skin and red blood. So depending on how the light is hitting them and what angle you're looking at them from, the skin can appear anywhere between green and dull pink. A lot of the really great mini painters find ways of working pinks and reds into orc skin. What I'm trying to do here is incorporate green and pink into the skin tone as efficiently as possible. I think the end result is interesting and not terrible. I protected the delicate ink layers with two thin coats of satin varnish. The next step is going to be a wash, and sometimes that really does mess with the ink layers, so it's important to protect them. For the washes, I used Army Painter Green and Military Shader on a few minis, and for a few others, I used Vallejo Washes Green and Black Green. I figured this would give the goblins subtly different skin tones. By the way, how ripped are these goblins? There are lots of goblin models out there, and these ones are way on the shredded side of that goblin spectrum. The muscle definition worked pretty well with the airbrush techniques that I was using, and it's working great with these washes, too. Other than green skin, these goblins have loincloths, hair, and a few straps. All of this is pretty straightforward. I picked four bright, fun colors for the cloth, 
and I decided to use tamer colors for the hair. These goblins would have also looked great with bright colored hair, but this batch is going to get brightly colored loincloths instead. I painted in a few extra details, and these goblins are already pretty much set to crew those pump wagons. For painting, I have them stuck onto temporary bases with just a tiny spot of super glue. Normally, I just glue the left foot so that it's easy for me to use a hobby knife to pop them off of their painting base. Once I had eight goblins off of their painting bases, I just needed to figure out who went where. I knew the medium wagon and the big wagon both got a pair of pumpers. The ultralight wagon is sail powered only. In the end, the big and the small wagon both got two crew members, and the medium wagon got four. I popped the canopy onto the big wagon, and we're done. The goblin Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. What an image, these three wagons having a race. This scene is wacky, but it works. The paint jobs are super simple, but I'm proud of the feel and the color balance of all three of these models. There's stuff that tickles me about each of these builds. For the ultralight, I love the simplicity. On a windy day, this vehicle might even work, so long as it's going downwind. The third wheel looks natural, and I love it. I think it would have looked just as cool with that third wheel at the back though. Even on this small of a build, there are interesting choices to be made. I also like that it isn't as violent as the other two. Two wheels do have spikes, but other than that, these goblins are just out for a sail and enjoying the day. That pointing goblin is my personal favorite. He makes a great skipper. On the medium wagon, I was able to find a place for all four goblins. On this model, my favorite design element is the poop deck there in the back. The janky little balcony and the steering wheel make me happy. I'm also a bit tickled by the sideways minecart bump. As for the articulating arm there in the front, well, I'm not sure what that's all about. I just started gluing things together, and that's what happened. Maybe it reaches out to poke people, or maybe it's just there flapping around in the wind causing havoc. Also, the cowcatcher ram there in the front is a nice bit, and I'm glad I was able to incorporate it. The big wagon ended up being a vehicle that can drive forwards or backwards. On one end is a pair of spiked rollers, plus some big spiky clubs for good measure. On the other end of the vehicle is a big metal claw. I was happy that I was able to give these goblins a raised command bridge. These lucky fellows even got an awning. The awnings in this set of bits were some of my favorite pieces, and I was a bit sad that I didn't find the opportunity to use more of them. I can use the awnings as tents though, something for the tuckered little goobers to come back to after a long day of racing their wagons. Pumping across the wastelands is tiring stuff. There were a ton of bits in this set that I didn't have a chance to use, so I encourage anyone with a printer to check it out. I'll be a guest judge in the cast and play wagon building competition, and I'm looking forward to seeing what other folks come up with. I encourage you to check out the cast and play YouTube channel too. Alex has cool footage of the sculpting process on there. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks to Alex for humoring me with this idea for a set, and thank you all so much for watching.